This is by Mr. Nightmare from eight years ago. Three Scary True Pizza Delivery Horror Stories, Volume 2. We're going to go ahead and check it out again by Mr. Nightmare. I think you guys all know who Mr. Nightmare is. Go check him out. If you're not subscribed, I'm sure most of you guys are subscribed to Mr. Nightmare. If not, go check him out. Go subscribe to his channel. Let's check it out. And I think I watched this a long time ago, so I probably won't even remember the story, to be honest. I 16 in my town in the suburbs of a big city. Jeez, Mr. Nightmare's voice even sounds different here. It, do it does not sound the same. At first, they I started at 16 in my town in the suburbs of a big city. At first, they put me to help the chef in the kitchen and clean the place and stuff. Two months later, my boss told me that on the days off of the main delivery boy, I would deliver, and I said yes, of course. Then all of a sudden, the delivery boy quit when he came from delivering a pizza at this one house. He looked traumatized and shaken like uh -oh. something with his face and his eyes. He went into my boss's office and they argued for about 15 minutes. Then he came out and said, good luck, kid, then told me he had quit. I asked Oh why. gosh, good luck kid and then he quit his job. That that's not very good. And he said, "Just a shitty job, that's all." He then patted me on the back and left. I knew it was something else Pizza than for just life. a shitty job. <laughs> I didn't think much of it. That was the last time I saw him. So for the next couple of weeks, I was the delivery boy till they could find someone that can deliver pizzas. About two weeks into me delivering pizzas, my boss gave me the address to a house and as usual I put in the GPS and went over. Watching the sunset while driving over there. Yep, the house is gonna be like out in the middle of freaking nowhere, I bet. I was hoping it'd take two minutes tops so I could get home. Unfortunately, it was in the rural side of town of where the houses course. were like a quarter mile <laughs> from each other. I stopped in front of the two floor house and looked at it. I got the creepiest feels when I stared at it. Lawn not cut, with weeds, dead trees, and the old porch with no chairs or flowers. Yep, the house is abandoned. Every one of these stories, it's always some abandoned house, and it's like some setup. Red flag alert. Pots or tables, just plain. It seemed abandoned, but I got out anyways and knocked on the door. I was hoping my boss gave me the wrong address or something so I could get the hell out of there. Then, the door lock started to shake, and the door opened. It was an old lady, at least 70 years old or something around there, with white hair, teeth missing, and skinny, very short too, but oh. her eyes just glaring at me. It really freaked me out. I figured if I was nice, things would turn out okay after all. Pepperoni pizza- I'd be like, you better give me a big tip for driving my ass all the way out here when I want to get off work and go home. Be the type of place to give you like a dollar tip or no tip at all. Like, you gosh dang that if I got him up. <laughs> Ma'am, I said as friendly as I could. Yes, she said with a hoarse voice as if she had a sore throat. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, here you go. I handed the pizza over, but she just looked at it with no emotion and didn't take it, getting her purse. Did you come with someone else? I froze then quickly looked up at her, still glaring at me. That question really frightened me. Um, no. I s yeah, that is a... That is an odd question for somebody to ask. If you're delivering a pizza and then the, the lady said, did you come with anybody else? Wanting to verify if you're alone by yourself? Yeah, that's a little bit of a weird question. Are you alone? Like, what? said where's the other one he ran off on me last time he came ran off where's the other one he oh it's the it's the guy who quit it's the guy who quit at the beginning she said where's the other guy he ran off on me saying the the other delivery driver who quit I thought, oh no it didn't make sense it's the other delivery he driver quit some weeks ago i said then she got her purse and started searching for money. Oh, gosh. Or so I thought. She did for about a minute. The D Crack, have you ever had a weird pizza delivery experience? Uh, Cameron, I've never, um, 
no, I've, I've never worked as a delivery driver, pizza, any type of food. Um, I've had pizza delivered to my house before where I live, but the person who delivered the pizza to my door, they were always just normal. I haven't had any personal weird experiences, no. The longest minute ever, and with the hands in her purse, she stopped and looked at me, not in a look of surprise or in confusion. She's, she's mad. Just like as if she was thinking really hard on something. I could tell she was holding something in her right hand inside the purse, but I couldn't see what. I really started to freak out at this point. What if it was pepper spray, or a knife, or even a gun? I mean- The weird thing is, this is some old lady. I'm not saying all old ladies are innocent. I'm sure throughout history there's been plenty of old ladies who have committed crimes before, but he said this looked like an older lady, at least in her 70s. Like, why is she acting so strange? What could take her so long to get 10 bucks out of her purse? Then, behind her, I saw a shadow. A silhouette of a man coming to the door. And all of a sudden... Yeah, this old lady's just a distraction. She has a son. She has a son, a grandson, maybe her husband's some, like, freaking serial killer, and she's just distracting him. I heard footsteps crushing the leaves on my left side next to the porch, Ooh. and a man's deep voice saying, Hey... I looked over and saw a head of a middle-aged man with what? a look of anger peeking over the porch. This guy then started to climb the porch, and that was when I realized I had enough. I darted to my car, threw the pizza inside, turned it on, and drove off. Get the hell! Oh, I thank look God! Back as I drove off in the dark. Get the hell out of there! I had to lie and pay for the pizza out of my own pocket, but it was worth it. On the day I quit, I decided to tell my boss what. Why would you lie? I would go back to my manager and be like, this place was really suspicious and there was some guy who looked angry, but you're going to get mad over $15, $20 you would have made on the pizza. I would have just been honest with my manager. What happened that evening, to which he freaked out as well and asked me why I hadn't told him. Yeah. He said James told him something like he just walked out of there and didn't pay attention to her. My boss then called the cops to look into the sketchy situation, and he told me I could leave. About two days later, he called back, saying the cops had the house registered as foreclosed for over a year, and they found three people living in there when they broke in, which were two men and the old lady I encountered. Yep, I told you the house was abandoned. The house was abandoned, and the old lady and two guys, they were squatters, which means they're living in a house they're not supposed to be in. It's an abandoned house or foreclosed. They were arrested, and he didn't tell me anything else. Oh! I'm still traumatized, and I don't know what would have happened if I would have waited. They could have easily jumped me, but thank God I quit afterwards, and I'm still alive. I really wonder what they wanted. They said there was an older lady and two guys. Like, were they just trying to rob him? Were they just going to try to rob him of his money? Any, any valuables? Or were they going to try to, like, abduct him and do something much worse? Like, what did they want with him? Just, just money? I don't know. I'll never forget the time they I was covering pizza. my friend's shift at a pizzeria we worked at. He was the delivery boy, while I was usually the one manning the register. On that night, I made two real deliveries to normal people. Then, my manager gave me one final delivery for the night. Why is it always the final delivery, the last delivery of the night, ends up being some, like, freaking horror show? It was five miles away, which was a long drive for what I was used to. The GPS told me to turn off the highway into some very quiet town. Somehow, I'd never even heard of this town. Oh, hell no. The GPS took me down some side roads that were even more dead than the main streets in this town. Half of the street lights weren't even on. I didn't like the looks of this place. Hell no. I just wanted to deliver the pizza and be gone. So I arrived to the house. It was a single floor little thing. I rang the bell. And almost immediately, the door swung open. There was an older man, maybe in his upper 50s, that opened the door. 
His few hairs left on his head were gray, and he had a very pale face with a gray mustache. He gave me a smile and told me he'd be right back. He walked away into his house out of view, and I just stood there in the cold waiting for him. I was a little uncomfortable with the area, and the looks of the guy answering didn't help. The sound of stomping on the creaky floors inside the house came to the door as the man appeared back in the doorway with a smile. He said I should come inside where it's warm while I waited. I told him it's okay, but he just started nudging for me. Rule number one, and I've said this several times. I've never been a delivery driver in my life, but if I was, I would never go in someone's house. No. Come inside while it's warm. Freaking guy standing there with a creepy ass smile on his face. Come inside. I got some... I got some popsicles in the basement. Hell no, I'm not coming in. For me to come inside. I cannot justify my actions, but it was like five degrees outside. I foolishly stepped inside the sketchy stranger's oh, house. Oh, you idiot. He shut the door behind me and stepped I don't off. even feel bad for you now. If something happens to you, you went into their house. That's your own fault. Off into another room in a hurry. It wasn't even much warmer in the house. He clearly didn't even have a heating system. What? I found myself creeping closer and closer to the door as I got more uncomfortable. Then, the man came out of another room and gave me another smile. He opened up a door, apparently leading to the basement. Oh, no! He looked down and told me that he normally leaves his money down there. He asked me to come down there with him. Yeah, I'd say, okay, cool, bro. If you, if you left your... Wait, hold up. I normally leave my money down there. Why would you leave your wallet or your money in the basement? That's a that's a very strange place to leave your wallet. I'd be like, okay, great, bro. I'm going to wait here by the door. I'm not going to go anywhere. Take 30 seconds to a minute. Run downstairs to the basement. Grab your wallet. Grab your money. I'll be standing right here. I'll wait for you, bro. I'm not, I'm not coming down with you. Nope. But I refused. Even from where I was standing, I could see it was totally pitch dark down there. Yeah, no. And then, what happened next is where it all fell apart. Oh, don't tell me there's another person. I heard the sound of a creaking step coming from the basement. Somebody else was down there. Yep. Yep. I nope. I decided it was time to go and turned nope. around to open the door, but the man was already right on top of me. I punched him in the face and managed to get him in a hold, but I heard somebody stomping up the basement steps. Oh, and I had to get gosh. Out of there. I pushed the man to the floor, ran outside, got in my car, and drove off without looking back. Yeah, no. I told my manager everything, and he called the cops, but I don't know whatever became of that. My manager gave me a couple days off afterwards. <sighs> Since then, Yo. I am much wiser to the fact that you should never enter a stranger's house. Aren't you taught that when you're like five years old? Don't talk to strangers. If you're at the store, don't, like, walk off with a stranger. You're taught that when you're, like, a little kid. Just, like, look both ways before you cross the street. It's common sense. I was out doing a delivery one late night. It was probably the longest drive I'd have ever taken for a pizza delivery. From the pizza place I worked at, it was a 20-minute drive, which isn't too crazy out where I live. Plus, they ordered four large pies, so I figured it was a party and I would get a much bigger tip. Yeah, 20 minute drive plus you're delivering four pizzas. I better get a minimum $25 tip. <laughs> Navigating the dirt roads at night was always annoying, though. I pulled up to the given address. It was some old, sketchy looking building literally in the middle of a forest clearing. There were no cars parked anywhere or any lights on. I put my car in park and called my boss. I asked him to reread the address at least three times to make sure I typed it in right, but that checked out. I could tell he was in a really bitchy mood, and he told me to at oh, least knock great. on the door and check it out. He would normally get mad if we took back one pie, but I was afraid of what he would do if I brought back four. Listen to the all these stories, there's always some greedy ass manager yeah i understand you know the the business makes four pizzas and then you return 
without the money, you, you wasted four pizzas, but a couple pizzas is not worth somebody getting freaking killed over delivering pizza. I was insanely unnerved, but got out anyway and forced myself to the front door of the building. There was no doorbell, so I just knocked really hard. I heard nothing and didn't really expect to hear anything. I was extremely disappointed, not because nobody answered the door, but because I was realizing that it was all a waste of time and gas. And he knew if he returned back to the pizzeria with no money in the pizzas, he was going to get a stern talking to, even though it's not his fault. He can't control if people are there or not, even though clearly it's going to be some sort of setup. I knocked one more time out of desperation and then began to hear some kind of rustling noises from inside of the building. Oh no. I knocked again and yelled that I was the pizza guy. Pizza there was time. Silence now. Pizza I felt time. A bit more uncomfortable <laughs> now than before. But before I could turn around, I noticed something at the window. Oh great. There was someone looking through the window. Nope. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. All I noticed were their eyes. Their eyes were open wider than I knew possible, staring intently at me. Bro, run! I was disturbed enough Get by out this, of there. I dropped the pizzas and ran back to my car. Yeah, good idea. The shitty thing wouldn't start until turning the key for the third time. I drove off the grass and back onto the dirt road, but I felt the car rocking about, shaking and bumping. Something wasn't right. I didn't make- Yep, tires were slashed. Someone popped the tires when he wasn't paying attention. Just like that other pizza story we reacted to a while ago. Someone snuck, snuck out there and popped the tires. Get far from the building before I started hearing a sharp scraping sound coming from outside. Oh gosh. There was so much resistance that I couldn't even drive. The car came to yes. a stop. I got out of the car to check what the hell was wrong. A, a chill ran up my spine you. You as I began to feel like my heart was constantly skipping beats. My tires had been slashed and, and had completely Ramsey fallen off the rim. The Not just the front though, the all oh, no. four tires She's were slashed. I realized somebody did this when I was knocking on the door to that building. Yep, someone snuck up and did it. Instead yep. of running, I got back in the car and locked the doors. I was so close to that building, I could practically see it from where I was, if it weren't for the trees blocking the view. I dialed 911 and explained everything to the operator. She told me the cops would be over as soon as possible and that I need to stay hidden. I asked her if it was advisable to stay in the car or run, and she told me it would be best to stay in the car with the door locked. She asked me to stay on the line with her until the cops arrived. My whole Yo. body was shaking. In all directions, there was nothing but dark, seemingly endless forest. I knew it would take forever for the cops to get there. I was not comfortable with sitting in that car. So it's always, these stories are always out in the country in like the middle of nowhere, surrounded by woods. You're just going to have to get out and hide in the woods or something if someone comes up on you. You're going to have to get out of your car and just hide. Close to whoever did this. The next part, though, is what utterly destroyed me. It still shakes me to this day, and I hope nobody ever has to experience this kind of fear. As I was scanning all the windows, making sure nobody was outside, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was the same person. The same person I saw at that window. Oh! Eyes open wider than ever. Oh, I could heck see now no! It was a woman, and I could ever so slightly see a smile begin to spread across her face. What do you want? Leave me alone! I opened my door and fawn sprinted into the woods, not caring how much noise I made. I ran until I was out what of breath. What do you want, crazy woman? Long, and I hid behind a giant Leave me alone. on the ground. I tried to cover my loud breathing with my hands as I waited and waited for what felt like hours until I finally heard sirens in the distance. Here comes the police. 
I gathered up all the stamina I had left to run all the way back in the direction of the dirt road. Eventually, the glowing red and blue lights came into view, and I had never felt better in my life. They were parked in front of my car, investigating with flashlights. I came out yelling at them like a lunatic to help me. I fell to the floor and started to gag, almost throwing up from running so much. They picked me up and began to question me, to which I explained everything to the best of my ability. One of the two cars drove over to the building, and the two officers began to search the building. They came back with nothing except for a couple of spiky eyes. That crazy woman frickin' disappeared. She disappeared, they never found her. Objects. These objects were exactly the same as the ones used to slash my tires. The cops guessed that it was some kind oh of sick, God. demented couple, being that I saw the woman, but unfortunately they were never found, and that still kills me to this day. I obviously quit my job right after that and started working at a local grocery store. I know that I'll never forget seeing that woman at the back of my car. That's freaking creepy. Yeah, I, um... I think I reacted to this like six or seven years ago. Honestly, I did not remember these stories. It's been so long. I forgot about them. But yeah, I think working at a grocery store may be a little safer than, uh... Delivering pizzas out in the middle of nowhere. Where there's some crazy people trying to capture you. 